September 29th Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible Hebrews chapter 13 from the New Testament Brotherly love must continue. Do not neglect hospitality because through it some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those in prison as though you were in prison with them and those ill-treated as though you too felt their torment. Marriage must be honored among all in the marriage bed kept undefiled, for God will judge sexually immoral people and adulterers. Your conduct must be free from the love of money, and you must be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you, and I will never abandon you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, and I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Remember your leaders who spoke God's message to you. Reflect on the outcome of their lives and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Do not be carried away by all sorts of strange teachings, for it is good for the heart to be strengthened by grace, not ritual meals, which have never benefited those who participated in them. We have an altar that those who serve in the tabernacle have no right to eat from. For the bodies of those animals whose blood the high priest brings into the sanctuary as an offering for sin are burned outside the camp. Therefore, to sanctify the people by his own blood, Jesus also suffered outside the camp. We must go out to him then outside the camp bearing the abuse he experienced. For here we have no lasting city, but we seek the city that is to come. Through him, then let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of our lips, acknowledging his name. And do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for God is pleased with such sacrifices. Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they keep watch over your souls and will give an account for their work. Let them do this with joy and not with complaints, for this would be no advantage for you. Pray for us, for we are sure that we have a clear conscience and desire to conduct ourselves rightly in every aspect. I especially ask you to pray that I may be restored to you very soon. Now may the God of peace, who by the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead the great shepherd of the sheep, our Lord Jesus Christ, Equip you with every good thing to do his will, working in us what is pleasing before him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever. Amen. Now I urge you, brothers and sisters, bear with my message of exhortation, for in fact I have written to you briefly. You should know that our brother Timothy has been released. If he comes soon, he will be with me when I see you. Greetings to all your leaders and all the saints. Those from Italy send you greetings. Grace be with you all. God, there's so many uh, beautiful things to reflect on in this last chapter of this uh, letter uh, to the Hebrews. One of my favorite parts is, Do not be carried away by all sorts of strange teachings, for it is good for the heart to be strengthened by grace not by ritual meals, which have never benefited those who participated in them. And we, um, because we're not Old Testament Christians, we don't have so-called ritual types of things. We don't have the old history of sacrifices and, and certain meals like uh, Jewish people do. But we definitely have our rituals. Uh, we go to church at a certain time church is only supposed to last for a certain amount of time. We do church in a certain order each week. Um, if we go to Bible study, we go at a certain time. We follow a certain order. And part of that's good for, I totally get for organization type of purposes. But part of it too, I think is bad because we get so locked into um, the ritual part of it, the process part of it, the timing of it, that we forget why we're actually there in the first place. You know, it was interesting. Um, there was a person, a brand new person who showed up at our church uh, a couple weeks ago and he was, he smelled of alcohol. Um, he cried through most of the service and uh, hollered some amens really loud in the middle of the sermon and freaked a few people out in the 
congregation and it really bothered me a lot. I couldn't understand <laughs> in my perhaps naive way of looking at things. I couldn't understand why we weren't stopping service to help him. I, I honestly was baffled. Um, why were we continuing in that process when he needed prayer, he needed somebody to talk to him? Uh, I don't know why one of the men in the church didn't pull him aside and ask him if he could pray with them or sit down and talk to I, I don't know. Um, and it's not really fair for me to second guess because I did what I could during the service by talking to him and handing him a Bible and things like that. But I think sometimes we get so caught up in the processes of it that we forget why those processes are there in the first place. Strengthened by grace. Fully understanding that we don't deserve to even go to church, much, much less have an opportunity to have a relationship with you. And it is through your grace and your incredible mercy that we even get to begin to approach a relationship with you. And sometimes that just becomes something that we take for granted. How sad that sounds, but I think it's just something we take for granted. And the processes and the timing and the meetings and the how we do things overtake that just natural way that our heart thinks. Actually, the natural way that you created our heart. Mm. To just love you and to just seek you and to help others and to glorify you and to show other people love. God, help us to remember. Please remind us in all situations to not get so caught up in the this is how this must be done this is how this must be done let us remember your true heart and the heart that you put in all of us and how it was made to worship you and glorify you and to love others in your son's name i pray amen